Okay, so let me introduce the team. I'm Lisa Blecker. I'm the Pesticide Safety Education Program Coordinator. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And so if you um, sign up for this, it's very likely that you've interacted with us in some way in the, in the past. Um, uh, Maria Alfaro is on the line. She's the co-presenter and co-host. Um, I've got Sarah Hernick here, and she's going to be offering some technical support. So if you're having problems seeing polls, if you can't access a link, something like that, um, Sarah will be able to address and help you. And then I also have Katrina Hunter on the line. She's another person in our program, and she has been keeping up with PPE supplies, so she might jump in and provide information in the chat for you guys um, if, I, if I fail to mention it, okay? And if you have any questions, again, check the Q&A. Uh, pesticide safety at ucanr.edu is an email address that will get to the whole team so somebody can answer even if one of us is away from our computer or something like that. Um, so anyways, today we're going to be talking about respiratory protection. Um, hmm, I think I put the wrong icon in here. Oh no, this is Maria. Sorry, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass it on to Maria. Hi there, thank you. Welcome everybody. And um, like Lisa said, um, thank you for um, your diligence in trying to access the, um, the webinar. Uh, let's see. So like Lisa said, we're talking about respiratory protection and um, we are going to be talking about the following topics. What is a respirator? What is happening with respirators now? And like Lisa said, we have our colleague Katrina um, online who will be jumping in at some point and um, addressing that. And what do you need to do in, um, or what can you do if um, you can't find the respirator that you would normally purchase? We're gonna talk about that as well. We're also going to talk about when to wear a respirator and how to get a proper seal. We will also talk about respirator requirements, how to choose a respirator, and when to dispose of filters and cartridges. So this is not a comprehensive respiratory protection training. So I just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. And this training or this presentation does not satisfy your annual training requirement for a respirator. And we also cannot teach you how to perform a fit test via this presentation. So we're gonna go ahead and launch our first poll. Thank you. So if your label requires you to wear a respirator with any NRP filter, which of the following respirators can you wear? It's multiple choice. Um, so the answer, you can you could choose multiple responses. So um, let's go and see what the responses were. So it looks like um, most of you understand, okay, um, know that A is the correct response for particulate filtering respirators. Okay, we'll keep moving. Um, a lot of you chose B, um, a third of you chose C, and a smaller portion of you guys chose D. Okay, so here's the thing. The question asks if your label requires you to wear a respirator with any N, R, or P filter. That means you need a particulate filtering respirator. So all of these uh, respirators pictured here, first of all, they're all respirators, but all of the ones pictured do have some element of particulate filtration. So A has a, an organic vapor cartridge on it, and the organic vapor cartridge does not provide particulate filtration, but it has um, a particulate pre-filter clipped onto the front of that cartridge. And that's what gives you the particulate filtration. So if you just were wearing organic vapor cartridges and you didn't have an N, R, or P pre-filter, like a little disc, all of my respirator supplies are in my office and I'm not allowed to get in there. Um, anyway, so I don't have anything to show you. So all of those little um, particulate pre-filters that clip on to the front of the um, organic vapor cartridge that's actually what your label is requiring. Okay, so the second respirator is a P95. So P 
refers to the N, R, and P, right? 95, uh, we'll talk about what those letters and numbers mean. P95, disposable respirator, absolutely um, will filter out particulates. This is an N95, okay? So this is an N95 disposable respirator. It is a respirator. And um, so it does provide particulate filtration. And this one, oh, oh my goodness, my mouse is really tricky. So this last photo shows a powered air purifying respirator. It's not, um, it's like you breathe the own air, but like there's a little bit of a motorized pump and it does actually uh, filter out particulates. Um, it mostly, they have the P100 filter on it. And we'll talk about all these respirators a little bit more in depth. So it's really important to know what kind of protection you're, you're, you are needing from the pesticide that you're applying or handling. Okay, because if it's requiring organic vapor cartridges, you have to have that or you're not protected. If it's requiring particulate filtration, you have to have that or you're not protected. So you gotta get the right kind. So let me just quickly address what is happening um, with respirators um, at the moment. So these um, N95 and also the other particular, like this is an N95 and over here is a P95. And even if you're talking about R95 or P100, these disposable filtering face piece respirators are in very short supply. They are very difficult to find. Um, 3M has told us that currently 90% of their, resp their disposable respirators are going to healthcare workers and 10% to other sectors. The other sectors includes ag, it's not only ag. So usually that number is flip-flopped where only 10% goes to healthcare workers. But with the COVID-19 um, crisis, there is an increased need for these disposable respirators and other sectors. So they're just not super available. Um, and you can't even at the moment order them from many suppliers until June or July, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about that just a little bit more. Okay, so if you need an N95 respirator or a P94 at five or a P100, if all you need is particulate filtration and you would normally wear one of these disposable um, particulate uh, filtering face pieces and you can't find them, then you need to either seek an alternative, more protective respirator, or you need to seek alternative pesticides that do not require a respirator. That's really the bottom line. You can shop around for respirators and you have to be very diligent and persistent in, in finding the supplier um, and keeping in contact with them in order to access the supplies when they come available. But in the meantime, you need to be, um, you really need a multi-pronged approach to making sure you and your employer employees are protected, their respiratory protection is covered. So, um, so this is an example, and we'll talk more in depth about this. So this is an elastomeric mask, right? It is um, a reusable respirator mask. And these things right here, they're magenta, which means they have P100 um, protection. So if you need a P95, these are P100 and they're even more protective because 100 is bigger than 95. And we'll talk about that as well. So there might be a case when you need to um, switch to something that's a reusable option, okay? So disposable N95s, disposable respirators are difficult to order. Okay, the reusable respirator options, um, initially the supplies were really low, but those supplies have rebounded, okay? And so they are available. Maybe you have to keep shopping around, maybe you have to check a few times. I told people last week, it's kind of like toilet paper. Um, you may not get as many as you want at the time that you want. You might have to go to a different store. You may not buy, be able to buy four and you can only buy one, but you have to keep shopping around. But the reusable respirators are available. Um, and just looking at different brands and distributors. Okay, so now we are going to launch poll number two, respirators not available. And so I'm gonna turn this over to Maria, so I'm gonna mute myself. Okay, so let's see. If you have questions about a respirator 
about what respirator is appropriate to use as a replacement for what you normally wear, who should you contact? Is that your county ag commissioner, Cal OSHA, or healthcare workers? Okay, it looks like almost everyone has um, responded and county ag commissioner, that is correct. So we have, um, so why should you contact your county ag commissioner's office? Well, they're the ones that will um, know whether or not if you're having to substitute or use another respirator, whether or not it is the, it's appropriate for the applications that you will be making. We're ready to launch poll number three. Okay. In the United States, all respirators must be certified by which agency? Okay, it looks like everybody, or almost everybody responded. So 87% said um, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, which is correct. So um, NIOSH, the National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety, they certify um, the the respirator, sorry, I'm struggling with all these windows that keep popping up and we don't need them anymore. So, and if you responded yes to this one, you are correct. This is a respirator. And one of the things we wanna point out is that some people think it's a respirator because of this little valve when in fact, it is um, an inhalation valve. And what you need to be looking for is the um, information that is written on the actual valve. It should say NIOSH because like we just established, NIOSH is the certifying agency. It will also indicate um, some information with an N, R, or P, which basically, <laughs> basically means that um, it is, hmm, there we go. It indicates its resistance to um, oil. The other information that you will find on there is um, a number. So it'd be N95, N99, N100, so forth and so on. And that basically indicates the efficiency of the filter. Some of you might see um, respirators like this that don't have the valve, but they have all the information. It says NIOSH N95. And when NIOSH certifies a respirator, they actually indicate that with um, those letters and number combination. But we won't go into a lot of detail about that because um, you just need to look for NIOSH and um, the N or the letter and the number. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Lisa. Uh, there are two main uh, classifications of respirators. One is air supplying and one is air purifying. And really we're not gonna talk a lot about air supplying respirators because they're really not that common, particularly um, with pesticide applications. They're mostly used for pesticide applications like in emergency situations and sometimes with some soil fumigant applications you need them. Um, so the air supplying respirators, they use clean air from, the, uh, from an outside source. So those like pressurized oxygen tanks and they're used in low oxygen areas. And again, this is the most I'm gonna say about air supplying respirators. I'm not gonna talk about them for the rest of the time. So primarily what you guys are using is air purifying respirators, which means that you're, you're breathing ambient air and your lungs are powering the filters, okay? So they use chemical and physical filters. A chemical filter is something like an organic vapor cartridge and a physical filter is like those particulate filters. So here, this is an organic vapor cartridge. I know this. Tell me in the chat how I know this. I'm not gonna tell you yet. So this is an organic vapor cartridge, but right on top, there's this like papery thing on top and that is a physical particulate filter. So some pesticides require uh, protection against gas and vapor and some pesticides require 
particulate protection, and some require both. So it's really important to read carefully what the label says. So when you're substituting a respirator from your normal, that you're doing it correctly. So there can be powered and non-powered. But one thing they all have in common is they don't have their own oxygen source. Okay, you 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 know breathe you breathe in the oxygen and then it passes over these filters. Okay, so let me um, open my chat. Um, oh, the color. Ava said the color. Yep, that's right. So this is a filtering face piece, right? This is a disposable respirator. It can be N95, could be P100, could be R99, or anywhere in between, okay? So it is an air purifying respirator, exactly like this is an air purifying respirator, okay? So it is a respirator. So all the requirements of this cartridge respirator also apply to this, re to this respirator. So if you leave here with nothing else, this is a respirator. Yep, you got to get fit tested. You have to have a medical clearance. You have to have annual training. All of those same requirements if it's required. So it's the simplest type of air purifying respirator. Typically, it, it'll be, so the TC stands for tested and certified by NIOSH. And TC84A is the approval code, okay? And so sometimes respirator, uh, pesticide labels have TC84A. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have something wrong. But almost always, um, they're going to tell you, oh, I didn't add in a slide. Okay. Almost always, they're going to tell you that you require N, R, or P protection, okay? That is the signal that you need particulate filtration, okay? And so... Uh, this is a cartridge respirator, so it can remove low levels of vapors, dusts, or mist. So the vapors are removed by this organic vapor cartridge. Um, the dust and mist are removed by this uh, particulate filtration. Um, and then there's a TC codes, but sometimes they're wrong on labels, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. Cartridges are color-coded. And the particulate filters have a, a classification system. So whether you're wearing the disposable filtering face piece respirator or whether you're using an elastomeric respirator with some sort of particulate filtration on them, the classification is the same. N is not resistant to oil. R is resistant to oil. P is oil proof, okay? So this is um, a gradient of protection. So if you have a pesticide that you're handling and it has a lot of oil in the formulation, like an emulsifiable concentrate. Sometimes our adjuvants are like really oil-based. Um, a lot those labels, if they require a respirator, they might say R or P filter. They're not going to let you wear an N because it get gunk, it gets gunked up with that oil. Okay, and so um, also there's the 95, 99, 100. And really the difference between, it's just a filter efficiency, but the difference between a 95 and 100 is not super significant. But the difference between an N, an R, and a P is very significant. It is very important. So this is how one of these works, right? So we've got this filter, we've got this elastomeric mask, we've got an organic vapor cartridge that's only filtering out ga gases and vapors, and then we got the particulate filter. Okay. So this is an animation, right? So this is the face piece. Over here on this side of the screen is your face. And then there's the elastomeric mask, right? And so this is our cartridge. It's got probably activated charcoal or something in it. It's, it's um, filtering out vapors, okay? And this is a particulate filter. So it's trapping particulates. This is what's rated N, R, or P. This is what's OV or ammonia gas or something like this. So if you need N, R, or P protection, you need this more than you need this. Okay, so air goes first, it gets physically trapped, all the dust and mist, and then it goes through the organic vapor cartridge. And then, so it passes through two levels of filters before it enters your lungs. So the particulate pre-filter traps airborne particles and the chemical cartridges absorb gases. They don't both do the same job, okay? They do separate jobs. So, um, so now if you're looking for an N95, if you normally would wear a disposable filtering face piece respirator, like an N95 or a P95 or whatever, you can um, search out some P100 filters. So remember P is more protective than N, 
100 is more protective than 95. Okay, so these, they're like purple or magenta. Do you see that coloration? That indicates it has a P100 particulate filter on it. And these, these ones over here on the left, the Sparian, are designed to go onto a Sparian elastomeric mask. So this is where this uh, recommendation comes into play. If you are used to using a disposable one and you cannot find them, you can look for reusable options, but make sure if you're required to get particulate filtration, you get it the same with your reusable option. So P100 is a particulate filter. This is also a particulate filter. And our cartridges are color-coded. So this, Ava told me this before, she said that it's, if it's a black cartridge, it means it traps, um, it filters out organic vapors. And so organic vapor uh, cartridges are the most common cartridges that I see required on pesticide labels. So this is a cartridge that is designed to go with a Moldex mask and it's black. This is a cartridge that's designed to go with a 3M mask and it's also black. So even though they're made by different companies, they all follow the same color coding system, exactly like this one, right? The P100s are always like this purple or magenta. Maybe they use a different Panatone color or whatever, but they do use the same color scheme. So regardless of the company, an organic vapor filtering cartridge is going to be black. And so, like I said, P100 is typically magenta, sometimes it's a little purple hue, and it's, a, and it's a considered equivalent to a HEPA filter. And I don't remember the exact um, what HEPA stands for. I mean, I know what it means, but I can't regurgitate the words. But if anybody knows, put it in the chat, because I, uh, I can't remember. But anyways, it's considered, of all the particulate filters, it is the most protective. Because remember, P is more protective than N and R. 100 is more protective than 95 and 99, okay? So these are good options um, when you, uh, yeah, I mean, so card, okay, what am I trying to say here? Cartridges are color-coded, and also these P100 filters that go on a reusable mask are a good option for you when you can't find your disposable respirators. Is that what it means, Kim? High efficiency particulate air. I really thought it was something a lot more complicated than that, but I know high efficiency is correct. Um, HEPA filter. So, um, so our elastomeric masks come in half face and full face models. Um, of, and so if you wear the full face, that also serves as your eye protection. So that's a, it's a bonus there. And so again, you can see that this is an organic vapor cartridge because it's got a black band around it. And both of these have a particulate pre-filter. So again, if you can't find the disposable respirator that you're looking for, um, these are options for you. And I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this because each, NIOSH uh, puts a testing and certification code on all of the respirators based on what they're certified to protect you against. Um, the only problem with these certifications is on the respirator themselves and the components, they will be correctly coded. Um, on the pesticide labels, they will not necessarily be correctly coded. And I can't explain to you why that is because I don't know. I just know that it is. Um, so you'll have to look for not just these number and letter codes to figure out what kind of respirator you need, but the context clues of the words that are used to describe what kind of protection you need. So again, if you, so I'm suggesting different ways that you can um, increase your respiratory protection if you can't find the N95s that you're looking for. Okay, but just, I want you to keep this in mind. If you change respirators, for example, if you normally wear an N95 and it's a required use, um, and then you move to this elastomeric and you put an N95 filter on top of this OB cartridge, you have to repeat your medical evaluation because most medical evaluations, um, they clear you for a specific type of respirator you also need to repeat your fit test. Even if you got fit tested for this respirator five months ago, this respirator requires its own fit test and that has to be done at least annually. 
And then you're going to need additional training that corresponds to your new respirator, right? Because part of our annual training in, involves like how to care for and store um, and don the respirator. And that's different for these two different types of respirators. And you have to get all of that done before you wear the new respirator. So this is going to require some prior planning on your part, mostly the employer's part, because the employer is responsible for making sure all of these protections happen for their employees. Um, so this isn't an official uh, poll, but I'm going to put it in here. So which of these individuals is most likely to get a proper seal with a tight fitting respirator. So is it A, B, or C? You can tell me in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. So here, if you look here, um, this is an indicative of the line of where the respirator is going to sit on the person's face, whether it's a filtering face piece, disposable respirator, or an elastomeric mask. So this is where the line is. Um, so people say, a lot of people are saying C. Okay, so it's true. So this guy has stubble, like even like two or three days, technically even 24 hours worth of stubble can interfere with the seal of a tight fitting respirator. Um, this guy obviously no, right? He's got way too much hair. I mean, who is he? Jason Momoa? Um, is that how you say his name? Anyways, I'm not that cool. But this guy, he has a chevron mustache, okay? And so the mustache cannot cross the line of the seal, of the, of the respirator seal. So he keeps it nice and, and short, but if it keeps growing and he gets one of those curly cues, then that's not going to work. So too much stubble, no. Too much hair, no. And this guy can wear this mustache as long as the hair does not cross that line. Okay, and so you need to have adequate facial hair even to get fit tested, not just to wear the respirator, but even before you get fit tested. So, um, you know what, I'm gonna, I don't have the link to this readily available, but I can send it to you in an, e an email after this when we send you the VOAs, the verification of attendance. But anyways, there's this really cool pictogram or infographic or whatever it's called, I'm not that cool. Um, and so it shows you all the different hair, uh, facial hairstyles that you can and cannot um, use with the, um, a tight fitting respirator. So I have a poll question related to that. So let's launch poll number four. So can a person with a full beard still safely wear a respirator? Yes or no? So most of you said no. So that means um, I tricked you because I wasn't super specific in my question. I just said a respirator. I didn't say a tight fitting respirator. Anyway, so this is a powered air purifying respirator. So forced air, air gets forced through a hose and um, then it passes over these filters. So it's, there's no oxygen tank, there's no supplied air. This is an air purifying respirator. So it's still ambient air, it's just like it, there's a motor that sort of helps things along. So it, one, it's good for long application jobs. Two, it's good for people who do not want to shave. It is good for people who might have asthma. It also provides P100 protection. So, um, if you can't find, you know, a disposable N95 mask and you can't find one that fits well on somebody or whatever, an elastomeric, this is also an option. I like to tell people this because some people are very um, emotionally tied to their facial hair. And one thing that's really important is that these are expensive, okay, meaning they're not going to sell out, but they're also really expensive, but you can use the same respirator for multiple employees. It has to be cleaned and disinfected in between uses, but they don't need to be fit tested so long as this is a loose fitting hood. Okay, so um, it is potentially another option. So now I am going to, we're going to launch poll number five, and then I'm going to pass it over to Maria. So I'm going to I'm back and we're going to struggle again a little bit with those polls, but that's okay. So let's take a look at poll number five. When is, when um, in California, which of the following statement makes a respirator use a requirement? And you can choose all that apply. So it looks like 91% of you indicated that the pesticide label requires me to wear a respirator. In fact, 
all of these situations will require a use of a respirator. Okay, so um, yes, um, when the label requires you to use a, a respirator, it will tell you, Lisa already indicated that, it would give you an N or R and a number. Um, we have, what you see up here are the four situations in which a respirator will be required. It would also be required if there are certain permit conditions and if they're required by certain regulations and if your employer's policy indicates that it is required. So what does this all mean? Well, we all know that the label is the law, but it's only half of the story. What do I mean by that? It means that in California, we know that the label is a federal document. And in California, the Department of Pesticide Regulation adds additional regulations. And so that is an additional layer. There are certain counties that may also uh, um, add additional restrictions. And that is really important to know, especially for those of you that work in different counties. If you work in two or three different counties, check in with your Ag Commissioner because you wanna make sure that you are, you are um, compliant with the label, whether DPR has already indicated that there are um, regulations in place for a respirator use. And if your Ag Commissioner or your county has any additional regulations. And like I said, that could vary per um, county. We have an additional poll. Let's launch poll number six. Okay, if you are required to wear a respirator, how often must you get fit tested? We're testing you. Okay, it looks like everyone has responded and Okay, I'm gonna move you again, thank you. Um, once a year, yes, or at least once a year. And again, this is a moment for me to emphasize, and Lisa's already mentioned it, if you are going to use a respirator that is different from what you would normally use, you have to get fit tested in order to use it. Okay, thank you for that. So, um, and this is actually when I pass over to transfer it to Lisa. Uh, so with respirators, if it's a required use, meaning my label set or my employer makes me wear a respirator, then you're required to have an annual fit test, a medical evaluation prior to the fit test, and your respirator must fit and seal tightly. Okay, so no facial hair. You have to check your seals um, every time that you don the respirator. Okay, so yeah, this guy, that is a no good, right? He's got way too much facial hair. It's interfering with the seal of the respirator. So you also need annual respiratory protection training. So um, this is if you're an employee wearing, uh, using a required respirator. And so there's just certain elements that must be um, included in the respirator safety training. So this is just a summary of them. Um, and really nobody, you, you are qualified to provide this training if you train yourself and you know enough to give the training. So there's no specific qualification. So I want to go through some label examples with you because remember how I said um, that, you know, the label, you know, Maria said the label is the law and you got to follow the label because if it requires a respirator, it's required. Okay, but the labels sometimes have outdated language. So I'm going to help you find some context clues within the labels um, just to make sure you know what kind of protection you need. Sometimes you need particulate protection. Sometimes you need protection from gases or vapors and sometimes you need both. Okay, and so it's really important to find those clues in there. Okay, so this is um, Gramoxone SL 2.0. And just as a note, it is a danger poison pesticide. Um, and it also says fatal if inhaled. So I don't know, I really want to be sure that I am wearing the right respirator and that I'm properly fit tested and then I have a good seal. Okay. Um, so it says, I blew it up for you because it's hard to see. So a dust mist NIOSH approved respirator with any N, 
R, P, or H, E filter. So it doesn't use any of the TC codes, and that is fine, okay? Um, so it says dust mist. So what protects against dust and mist? Is it an organic vapor cartridge? No, that protects you against gas and vapors. It is a particulate filter that will protect you against dust and mist. And here it says you can wear any N, R, P, or H, E filter. So you can wear a HEPA filter, can wear a P100, you can wear an N95, you can wear an R99 or anywhere in that range, okay? So it could be a disposable filtering face piece respirator. It could be an elastomeric with the um, particulate filtration on it. If you choose to wear organic vapor cartridge, you're not fully protected unless you also have the particulate pre-filters on top. So this is, this is like the base uh, respirator that you can wear for that purpose. But again, if you can't find that, those elastomeric options that we talked about before are also appropriate. So another herbicide, you can tell I study weeds. Um, so this is Chateau. So I want to just point out that there are different um, PPE or there are different statements requiring respirators depending on the use. So for example, it says for aerial application to artichoke, mixers and loaders must wear this. But then there's a different requirement for ground bloom application to olive and pomegranates. So it's just, it depends on the application that you're making sometimes, okay? Sometimes the PPE list is the same for all handlers, but sometimes it's not. So it says, so, um, but both of them essentially say this, filtering face piece respirator, and then in parentheses, it says N95, R95, or P95. Hey, guess what? You can still wear a P100, you can wear an N100, you can wear an R100. So N95 is the minimum protection for filtering, uh, for fil uh, particulate filtration. P100 is like the gold standard, right? So this, this respirator fits that. You see how these two pesticides allowed for the same respirator, but they say it in a slightly different way because they just do. Um, so let's uh, launch poll number seven about replacement. So in California, chemical cartridges have to be replaced when? Is it every time a pesticide is used? Is it after eight hours of use? Is it the third one is gibberish, <laughs> or is it at the end of a day of use? There's only one right answer here. Don't choose option three. So a lot of people say after eight hours of use, and that is a very common misconception. And in, and in the pesticide world, it's absolutely not true. Okay, so I know that some of you also work in uh, Title Eight, so like you're maybe a safety manager for other contaminants and you don't focus only on pesticides. Well, Title Eight does say cartridges re get replaced after eight hours of use, but not for pesticides. Okay, the answer here is at the end of a day of use. So tell me, if you use um, a chemical cartridge respirator for four hours in a day, and you are done after those four hours. Do you have to throw away that cartridge at the end of that day? Or can you use it the next day for another four hours? Do you have to throw away that cartridge? I think we, we can stop sharing. I want you to tell me in the chat if, um, if you've only used that cartridge for that day for four hours, can you use it again the next day or do you have to throw it away? you have to throw it away. Okay, the regulation very specifically says at the end of a day's use, okay, and it doesn't give any hours. So here, um, some of you may be familiar with DPRs. What if you work for 10 hours? Well, it says at the end of the day's work. <laughs> so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you a little bit more specifics about the number of hours, um, but in general, at the end of the day is the minute, is, yeah is the bottom line. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with DPR's glove cards. Um, the back side of the glove card to help you select the correct glove material is these respirator restrictions. It says N type. So all those filtering face pieces that we we're talking about, if it's like an N95, N100, whatever, um, you can't use it with uh, pesticides that have um, 
oil in the mix and you have to dispose of it at the end of the day, okay? It doesn't give a specific number of hours, you dispose at the end of the day, okay? Because they're single use. So the R-Type, it has oil, you can use it with oil in the mix. It's oil resistant, but not completely oil proof. So you have to dispose of that at the, after eight hours or at the end of the day. So that's a case where if you were wearing a respirator for 10 hours and you needed an R, then you have to throw it away after eight hours, use another one for the next two hours and then throw that away, okay? So R, we do have to dispose of after eight hours, but, that, but it's still single use. It is disposed of at the end of the day, okay? P-type, again, dispose at the end of the day. Organic vapor, dispose at the end of the day. When even if you've only used it for two hours in that day, if you're not going to use it again, you throw it away. Okay, because otherwise it's not pr appropriately protecting you. Cartridges, filtering face piece respirators, and particulate pre filters, they are all single use. They are single use. Okay, so we already did that. Okay. So again, you have to wear respirators correctly to be effective and you have to replace them at the correct interval in order for them to continue to protect you, okay? So like wearing it, this, he is clean shaven, he's properly fit tested, but there are respirators on his chin. That's not where your nose is. That's not, your chin doesn't breathe. So I wanna just reiterate the main point here is that if you can't find the respirator you normally use, seek alternative, more protective respirators, um, or you can seek alternative pesticides that don't require a respirator. I think I have time for just a quick um, example of that. But anyways, there's also this, and Sarah's gonna link to this in the, um, in the show notes, I mean, in the chat box for you. Um, but these, this is from DPR, and they've helped outline some of your um, requirements, but also some of the things you can do if you can't find the N95 respirator you're using. Okay, so if you want to look at alternative pesticides, this is how I would go about it. So I went to the IPM website and I looked at the San Jose scale pest management guideline. So it's Almond Pest Management Guideline, San Jose scale. They give a variety of pest management options. So cultural controls, preventative controls, and also pesticides. So the whole gamut of IPM. So there's two pesticides that you could use. You could either use Omni Supreme Oil Plus um, Pyrepoxifen, or you could use Omni Supreme Oil Plus Carbaryl, okay? So here's the difference between those pesticides. There are recommendations for both of them and the rate and all that. So both of them will work, are effective on San Jose scale. But look, seven says, um, you need to wear a NIOSH approved dust mist filtering respirator. Um, so this TC21C is wrong, um, but it says any NRP or HE filter. So an N95 is really what's required for that. But what if you can't find one and you just don't have the time or resources to fit test your employee all over again for a new respirator? you can use the alternative. And so C's, for example, I'm not endorsing any of these products. These are just examples. So no respiratory protection is required. So again, here is a link to um, the pest management guidelines. I guess we should, we could put that in the chat box and I'll do that in a second. Um, if you um, are looking for ways to find alternative pesticides. Um, and then there's other resources here for you. Um, so safe and effective use of pesticides is our study guide for um, those of you getting your commercial applicator license or certificate. Um, we have an online training on personal protective equipment and it goes through a respirator module. Um, and then here's how to contact us. I'll flash that up in a, again in a minute. Okay, so that's a good email address. 